The Ladies' National Association was formed approximately 15 years ago in 1869 to campaign for the abolition of the Contagious Diseases Act. And your commitment to work for the repeal of these unspeakably unjust laws is deeply appreciated. Before I say more about the Contagious Diseases Act, let me tell you a little about myself. My name is Isabella Maria Susan Todd. I was born and raised in Edinburgh, and I am proud both of my Scottish and my Irish heritage. One of my ancestors signed the Solemn League and Covenant in Hollywood County in 1646, and my great grandfather was a colonel in the Volunteers in 1782. I come from fighting stock, but my fight is for the rights and the well being of women. I owe this passion to my mother. It was she who encouraged me to educate myself in careful private study. She was of the firm belief that the great features of the human mind are the same in both men and women, and that both need the same nutrient of education. Indeed, I always feel I am my mother's mouthpiece. We moved from Edinburgh to Belfast when I was in my mid-twenties after the death of my father. We became members of the newly formed congregation of Elmwood Presbyterian Church, a beautiful church opposite the University of Queen's. It was when I began my charity work that I realized that urgent attention must be given to the situation of women. There is much work to be done. I began by writing, contributing pieces anonymously to the Dublin University magazine and to the Banner of Ulster and I now earn a living writing leaders for the Northern Wing. In 1867, I wrote a pamphlet entitled On Advanced Education for Girls of the Upper and Middle Classes. I knew at that time that it would only be accepted if presented by a man, and this was done to the National Association for the Promotion of Social Science. But when I saw the heartwarming response it received, I resolved from then on to sum up the courage to speak myself in public. We can no longer be shut out. The time has come for women's voices to be heard. The Contagious Diseases Acts are not only an interference with civil liberties, but worse. They are the recognition and support of vice by the state. They apply solely to women and they legitimize the double standard of sexual morality. Under these acts, a woman can be stopped, inspected for sexually transmitted diseases, and hospitalized against her will, whilst men are free to spread disease without question. The women against whom these acts are directed are human beings like ourselves, the causes of whose downfall are intelligible always and generally most pitiable. Not monsters of exceptional depravity, deprived of all our sympathies. Yet I do feel it is of more moment to remember, not so much the child that has been worse than murdered, but the girl whose best affections have become the instrument of her ruin, and the hundreds and thousands of wretched and rejected women against whom society has sinned more deeply still. The ignorance the hopeless poverty, the feebleness of mind and body inherited from debased parents are not the fault of one bad man, but of every man and woman in the community who is not starkly fighting for their removal. This, then, is the call which our Ladies National Association makes to every town <coughs> and every circle. Wash your hands free from this stain. Help us to get rid of this legislation of despair. And in doing this work and fighting this battle, help us on the one hand to uphold the same standard of Christian morality for men and women alike, and on the other, to remove the evils, both social and economic, which leave too many women ready for a prey. No doubt, it is not easy work to which we call you, you Christian women especially. I do not know if we've been hearing more than usual of the angry and contemptuous words which people fling at every woman who comes forward to care for or actively to plead for 
those whom society chooses to ignore. But it is at any rate necessary that we should clearly make up our minds as to what is our duty and to what makes it right for us to know the facts, both as to the nature and working of the Contagious Diseases Acts and to the ends aimed at by their promoters and the results, and to act upon that knowledge. Men and women are the two great halves of the human race, both under the same law of God, the law of personal purity, a law which is enforced alike by all the known laws of moral and physical science. Violation of this law injures all society. For God has made of one blood all races and all classes of men. And one cannot sin or suffer without all suffering, either directly or indirectly. Ladies who have sheltered and happy homes, therefore, are bound to know if other human beings are being treated oppressively and to endeavour to prevent it. Under the Contagious Diseases Act, it is women who suffer. It is women who are oppressed and degraded by the soul-crushing machinery of the state regulation of vice. It is the poverty of women that is the greatest of all causes of their downfall. It is the inequality of the laws that affect women and the still greater inequality of social judgments that make that utter destruction possible. Is it any wonder that good women who have the power and the will to act according to their consciences feel it to be their most pressing duty to inquire into the causes of the misery of their weaker sisters and to take action to combat it? Ladies, together we can transform the lives of women. For over 15 years now, I have been campaigning with the Ladies Institute for Education, and at last, women will be admitted to the University of Queens and the University of Ireland. I was the only woman called to give evidence at Westminster concerning the Married Women's Property Act. And now that act has been passed, and women will no longer be mere chattels of their husbands. In 1871, I formed the Irish Women's Suffrage Society, and I have no doubt that it is only a matter of time for women not only have the right to vote, but to enter Parliament and all the professions and contribute fully to the life of society. Women gather together not only for themselves, but to fight for others. And it is because we have so much work to do that we fight as hard as we do. And we will not give up that fight to please mortal men. Keep up the good work for the sake of your daughters and their granddaughters. Thank you for your kind attention and good afternoon.